Origin just wants to do and this is I built a fully vertical factory that's a hundred percent total nightmare Satisfactory by channel let's game it out. It's been a while since I did a satisfactory video from let's game it out I think he I think I did the last one he did I don't know uh, but yeah satisfactory was awesome uh, I watched a lot of let's game it out video on it like conveyor belts and shit Anytime Let's Game It Out has a access to conveyor belt, it's gonna go downhill really fast. That was a video raft, I think, which was also awesome. The tornado and shit. He made a tornado in Satisfactory. Yeah, this is gonna be awesome. Let's watch it. Back to Let's Game It Out. Yeehaw, it's time for Satisfactory. The game is officially out after many years in early access, which means it's time for us to jump back in and see what new wild stuff we can do. My save game still works, by the way. The same save game I've been using for the last five years. But a lot has changed since the game first started, and nothing is more telling than looking at our unlocks. Like, at some point, this whole menu got confused. Some stuff is updated, some stuff isn't. I can't even tell what's new and what's not anymore. So for that reason, we're gonna leave all this behind and die into a brand new world. Hey, speaking of diving in, you ever thought about diving into a new browser? What about Opera GX, the browser for gamers? You ever just want to have a little more fun? Hey, well, go to original video page link and from there support this channel. Go to Opera GX dot double G for slash let's game it out 11 and support this channel. Awesome. Yeah, and now let's see how things are going over and hey, no, wait, pay attention to me. Well, that was great. Yes, everything looks good outside. I am very excited about what I am seeing. What awaits us this time, only time will tell. Okay, let's get out there, see what's going on. Oh, and can't forget our all-purpose doohickey that I lovingly fondle with my thumb. Okay, first things first. You, drop pod. Let us deconstruct you for parts. And the next thing up is we need to do a scan for the satisfactory building blocks of life, iron ore. I'm pretty sure you can't use guns in in this game but yet somehow he's gonna do this revolver roll with that one okay or where are you show me and we'll see up here on our little radar where it is target acquired let's go take a gander the game is also prompting me to pick up leaves along the way which is excellent because we got these excessive little grabby hands that'll just suction up anything we get close to and don't worry you take as much as you can go ahead and be greedy oh and there's our target now a place to get some iron ore well let's hop on down there and <sighs> We're fine. Hey, you, get away from that. I have a stun prod for such an occasion. In fact, even though it's walking away from it, I need a beauty bubble. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, that'll teach it. Anyway, back over to this. All we really need to do is approach it cautiously but optimistically and hold down E to do a little mining. And after a couple of quick taps, victory is ours. Truly, we are conk. Yeah, one of the things for damn sure, even on like, uh, you know, in our planet, right, let alone anywhere else, if anything is like close to our size or bigger than us, usually it tries to attack us if we attack them because I guess every life has this like scaling thing. If something's like equal or bigger than you, it's gonna try to attack you. But in video games, like even the gigantic thing you attack, it just runs away. Yeah, I don't think that's how it works. Conquerors. There is more where that came from, though. We can just keep on hitting this thing. And really, why wouldn't you? And now we have in our inventory all the things we need for right now. Leaves, wood, and finally iron, which we're going to use to build the hub, the heart of your factory. Let's see, where do we want to put this? It would make sense for us to put it somewhere accessible, but we don't normally do that, so I'm not going to start now. I am a big fan if we can make this work, which doesn't seem to want to be the case. But hang on, maybe I just need to go up there first. I mean, if there can be grass, surely there can be a base, right? Sad Sadly, apparently not. I can't seem to find a place where it'll let me do it. We did, however, find one of these guys. Yeah, in Fallout 4, it doesn't let you, like, put things on. I'm pretty sure there's a mod, put anywhere type of mod, which basically makes you do ridiculous shit. Even if you, like, don't, like, try to break the game and sensibly do that, it, it really unlocks you how many things you can do, which is, like, visual is great. Right? I remember creating settlements that were just insane. Not just really nearly weird shit, like properly that makes sense. But we wouldn't have worked you know, without that kind of mod because even if something should work, it doesn't in Fallout. In Bethesda in general. Look at that! It's a power. Oh no. Well, it was good while it lasted. All right, fine. We'll put it on top of this nice puddle. There we go. It looks so good. And also, kind of naked. Where's the roof and stuff? And where am I hearing this mewing noise? What is that and where is- Oh, hello. Oh yeah, I forgot all about this. These are supposed to be spiders, but I turned on arachnophobia mode. And so your visor in-game overlays a cat face on top of it. How's that for sweet in-game lore? Anyway, whatever. Doesn't mean we're not gonna come over here and smack it. Well, hopefully that takes care of that. Okay, is that a game feature on arachnophobia mode? Because that mode should just remove things. Rather than creating that weird- I'm pretty sure- that 
there must have been a mod right because no way developers would say that's screw it we'll just put cat on that looks weird shit like that just remove it if that's the case on so wherever there are spiders there are, there's nothing there that's better than like that kind of weird thing but okay that little problem. You know, I don't think it's going to. Something tells me there's more cats down here. Oh good, there's another one. Quietly hiding from us. Well, no time like the present, come here. Okay, much better. So we got two components to this thing. We got the crafting bench, where we can handcraft stuff like iron ingots. Where we just push the big old craft button and watch the magic happen. One beautiful ingot at a time. And then over here we have the hub terminal, which we can open up, select a tier, in this case tier zero. Choose the next milestone we're gonna work on, bask in the amazing unlocks we get. Then we select the milestone, and it sits here and demands stuff from us. In this case, whatever this is. Iron rods, which we make by taking iron ingots and turning them into rods. You know, kind of like going over to the crafting bench, heading on over to the side, selecting iron rod, and then craft a whole bunch of those. And then we drag what we need over there. Then it's like hub upgrade ready, ready to upgrade the hub. I'm sorry, I just don't understand. Could you say upgrade and hub one more time? Oh, hey, and you did. Thank you. It's also clear to me now. Okay, we did it. And for our troubles, we now have a frame. And that's how it goes. Now we can do hub upgrade too. Just like the first upgrade, which gave us an equipment workshop, portable miner, and another hand equipment slot. Hub upgrade two gives us stuff like a smelter, power line, copper, ingot, wire, cable, and another thing we can scan. What a deal. And now they need more stuff. In this case, iron rods and iron plates. No problem. We'll just go ahead and craft these. And then once that's done, upgrade again. And then watch as more stuff appears. Oh my goodness, now there's a room. And it's under construction. Just like my GeoCities page. Oh, and also a chest for like hiding stuff in an organized manner. That's kind of what containers are, right? And what might this other room be? Ooh, empty. How full of possibilities. I hope something exciting happens with my crying corner and we'll know when we do hub upgrade three, which incorporates not just plates and rods, but also something new. It's wire made from copper, which now we need to go find. No problem, that's what scanning's for. Come here, copper ore, where are you? Excellent. Only 195 miles away. I mean meters. Mile meters. Whatever. What do I look like? A physicist? The only thing that matters to me is we found the owl. Found the ore. Step one, hit the top part until it explodes. And then go for the pure copper ore chewy center. And then back over at the thingamabob. Take that copper, make it into ingots, which we then turn into wire. Feed the machine. Up. Yeah, in previous games, like extracting uh, minerals, this and that, was like kind of different. But since Minecraft became a thing and become so popular, Things are usually Minecraft-like, right? When you're like breaking ores and this, like basically that's how you do it in Minecraft. In previous games, like it's just like you need to do this, you need to do that. It's like a weird process. But I guess even the like game that's trying to be realistic is gonna have something like, oh, just like hit this thing, it will give you ore. There you go. Upgrade the thing. Oh my goodness, and also look at this. It looks like we now have a bed chamber. I call top bunk. And not just that, but look over here. We got our best friend. Oh, and not just that. You can actually use the toilet. Here, take some of this copper I made. And by that, I mean one copper. And then we flush it. Yes, excellent. Get it all over the floor and my shoes. Okay, great. And now back to rapid fire upgrade. Select milestone. Add the stuff that it needs. See, there's a thing I don't have. See that it's concrete. And then see that I can scan for limestone. And then I go find the limestone. Excitedly slide on the ground to get to it. Triumphantly defend ourselves from the local wildlife. Thank you for your sec. Yeah, there was a time when I liked uh, micromanaging shit at this level in game. In real life, I still micromanage things. But in game, I'll... Then again, back then in my life, I didn't have to micromanage anything. So that's why I guess I liked it in game. But yeah, when you're, when you're a kid, you don't have much responsibility. Just like education, like school, like college like whatever the fuck school mostly school and like uh you know tuition and that's it at that time like you like complex things right like, oh i need to figure this out i need to figure that out i need to like even like uh you know what is it called like chore task in the game feels fun right when you grow up like you you don't have that much time you're like two hours at best to play a game you don't want to just run around for one chore oh by the way two hours are over like the fuck I don't know, whenever I see things like this, it's like, uh, do we really need this? And this is why I loved Witcher 3 when it came out. Because it had like close to no chore in it. Like everything was kind of like tailor-made, which was which made it really fun, right? So Bethesda games nowadays, like a lot of chore thing. If, I guess it done right, it's fun enough. Like if I play Skyrim right now, I would still do bandit quests just to like buy first home. Even though I know I can make really fast money doing something else. But it becomes like a ritual type of thing. Very early stages, you do shit like this. 
but I don't know, like this kind of choice, oh, you need this, you need that, scan for this, bring that star field, same thing at it, it had that, right? So find like scan, planets, get iron or something with that laser miner or something. I just didn't like that. Sacrifice and then stabby stabby until I extract a lot of stuff. Turn that limestone frown upside down by turning it into concrete. Shove it in the machine. High five that button and so on and so forth. Give the thing to the thing. Push the thing. Watch as things change again, I think. I actually can't tell the difference on this one. Head back in, go to Hubbub Upgrade 6. Laugh heartily at the things it wants because it's so easy for us. And before you know it, we're not even alone on this planet anymore. Oh my goodness, look at this. We've made a friend. Are you trying to land? How about I I just stop you what do you think of that oh i'm just kidding i didn't mean what i said come on back down everything's safe just kidding oh. yeah let's give it out just like all your unwanted thoughts let's materialize he has really strong of that every video i saw of him like what if i do this in this way it's the worst possible thing he can think of and he does that oh. it's always awesome Okay, I think I've worked it out of my system. I swear, I'm actually gonna let this thing land this time. And scene. Our very own transport pod thing. At least I think that's what it is. The good news is tier zero is done. Now we're on to glorious tier one, which is gonna be the foundation for all kinds of stuff. Here's what I plan to do with our little base here. I want everything to come to me. I don't wanna have to wander all over the place to find stuff. I wanna be able to look at my base and be like, ah, oh, yes, that old thing. I can find anything I need here. Now, I know what you're thinking. That sounds kinda organized. Don't worry, it'll be fine. Head on up to the stuff sticking out the top, smack, smack, explode. And then luckily to make new stuff, we don't have to go back to base. We can just make it on site here with the crafting bench and the equipment workshop. It's like having a convenience store anywhere you want it, and it's only for you. Anyway, they're worth keeping around for stuff I may need, because you can build actual equipment here. In this case, a portable miner, because we need a few of these, because they're needed to- Yeah, basically a low in any settlement style system where you can build shit anywhere. It's just fun, even though it's unrealistic. I'm a civil contractor and make shit and realize like how hard it is to find just a perfect place to make something. There's no such thing as perfect place, but just like good enough place to make something. I like in this game, you can just willy nilly make anything anywhere. There you go. Just build this structure here. I guess it will work. Should we check for soil or anything? No, no, just like build the structure. Who cares? To make the bigger miners. Okay, now we can take this little mining building and it snaps right onto the node. And there it is. What a beaut. And now that that's done, we're gonna scan for all the various nodes nearby and then put miners down on all those too. And we'll know when our work is done because they'll have a check mark next to them, which means that all four of these ones right here will go from just being white like this to looking more like this. I mean, one of them doesn't have one because while a lot of these built just fine, for some reason we're having trouble overcoming this giant boulder in the way. Anyway, that handles all the iron nodes for now as well as any nearby copper nodes and also this limestone one and now that that's done with it's time for my favorite part the part where we attach conveyor belts to this mysterious black hole where stuff comes out okay out you go little conveyor belt we'll just do a quick one so we can see how it looks ah yes it's perfect there's no minerals coming out yet because we haven't given the thing power which is why this is pulsing red we're gonna run these conveyor belts this is a modern game with a modern engine you can look at it why is that black hole shit is still there i remember older games like early 2000s games having things where it's like something comes out of literally this pitch black thing you can't see inside but they could have fit something inside like or like just put those flappy thing that you can't see behind type of way this black thing something comes out it feels like very very old like a 20 year old game 20 well, you know like 2005 game or some shit first all the way back to our hub and that means running all the belts and in fact why not have this one zigzag across this one yeah look how good this looks finally a little art anyway they're all connected now and i decided that this little corridor is going to be the central thoroughfare you, you know for all belt, of our so conveyor belt needs and i do mean all of them and eventually they all do stop right around here right outside of the hub and now the next thing up is getting electricity working which over on our base thingy is where these things come into effect behold biomass burners you remember all those leaves we collected well now we'll be able to use them for something delicious fuel but first we need to run power to everything so we'll just drag a power line from that thing over to here yep like that and there's two of them so we gotta do it twice there we go connected them both and now it's just about running these power lines pretty much anywhere we want in the water fine all the way up here onto this thing yeah sure why not okay now everything is connected and now back over at the biomass burners the only thing left to do is pull the switch which...
and watch as I blow a fuse. What do you mean? Is this not enough power? What do I got to do math to figure this out? Oh, I see. I have to do a little reading. It looks like all of our factories consume upwards of 45 megawatts. And it looks like each one of these generators do 20 megawatts. Luckily, we can build these biomass burners all on their own, which is actually far more convenient anyway, because instead I'm going to build... Yeah, I remember when you fall out full, right? Like the big water purifiers, 40 water purifiers, right? I had to figure out like how much generator they need and I remember like I didn't have technology for like bigger generators. I used to like hook up like smaller two three generator for one of them and I had like 10 of them so like smaller 30 generators and all that shit in Sanctuary right Sanctuary yeah that's the name because in Fallout 4 if you want to become rich you need water because water holds up value and that is the thing you can actually produce. So you're going to be insanely rich in Fallout 4 if you just farm water, like put tons of water purifiers everywhere. Hold them over here near this stuff, just like one here, and also one right there, and then maybe one here. And what the hey, why not a fourth one? And right between all of them, we're going to put a storage container, which inside this thingamabob, we're going to shove all of our plant matter that we found. Ah, but that doesn't feel like enough. We can do better than that. Well, with all this glorious foliage out here, might as well just run around and siphon it all up. I like to think of it as doing a little landscaping. Whoops, looks like we missed some bushes, and whatever that is, no problem, easily handled, gimme, and gimme and you get a little nudge oh i'm sure it's just sleeping anyway now we have plenty of stuff actually more than enough stuff this container's all the way filled and we have so many more leaves left well that's fine we'll just build more of these how about four in fact one for each generator now all we need to do is run some conveyor belts in an organized fashion each to their own generator just like so and there they go and then making their way to these various generators to do the hard work so we don't have to let's go ahead and reactivate our power Ah, there we go. And look, there it goes. The true mining has begun. Yes, that's the spirit. Minerals for days. This isn't the end of their journey, though. These minerals do event- <laughs> Literally mineral for days. Because I remember one of the video he said, like, how long it takes to, tr you know, like, travel. It takes sometimes a long, long time. So yeah, literally it will take days before it reaches it. Eventually reach the end of their conveyor belt. And near the base too, we got this really cool looking monument thing. And you know what I especially like about it? It's verticality, which kind of has me wondering, can we just build stuff like above this? For that though, we're going to have to unlock some stuff. Over here in the tier one base building milestone, we're going to need to use some of these foundations. So let's feed the base. Oh joy, and now it's back to a fancy button. One, two, three, launch. And there goes our supplies right into the upper atmosphere. Or are you? Bye bye Yeah, I don't actually know if that's gonna affect some stuff. I'll just put the hub back down and I guess we'll learn together. What I can tell you is the thing is still gone. And if I look directly into the sky... Ah, beautiful clear skies and one weird little pixel. Hey, what is that pixel anyway? Wait a minute, that's the thing I eliminated from existence. Oh wait, it's coming back, apparently. Oh, and here it is, again. Okay, I see, we're just gonna pretend that didn't happen. Milestone exchange concluded. Okay, well great, now we have foundations. Which is what we're gonna use to build above our hub. At least that's the plan. Let's do some vertical building and see if it works. And it sure seems to be. We can build a cross too. Well, so far so good. This does appear to be directly above the base. And now the question is, can I build something on top of this? Let's experiment by putting a smelter there. Smelts ore into ingots. Yep, looks like it's possible. And we'll go ahead and put that right in the middle. And then from here, we're going to do some more building up. And then a cross to make an entirely new level again. And then I can place another smelter. Okay, great. Yes, this is looking oh so great. Yeah, I think they're, they're using Fallout 4 type of sta settlement system in a way because I'm pretty sure you can do the same thing in Fallout 4 as well uh, with the, you know, like uh, uh, base and shit like that, right? I'm pretty sure there's, uh, you know, like foundation like that, right? Multiple foundations, there's a foundation with a concrete one, right? I remember building one at the, what was a garden robot uh, settlement, but there is a overbridge there. So you can, you can make really fun tower there with the like bridge being like actual something that you can use. I made mean, it was awesome, like spent a long time and made an awesome thing that like revolves around that like bridge with the top, uh, you know, like a prop, awesome visual, pl uh, you know, house where you can see things in the distance, it's top of the bridge and everything. There's a sofa on the bridge, you can walk around on the bridge and it all, you don't figure all of the, the shit out because it was buggy and thing. And then I realized, wait a minute, if you just like walk a bit ahead, like close to a factory that was the closest location, it will disappear. What the fuck, man? Like how many settlements out there, right? If you create a longer structure, how it is to like register it like in LOD, 
right? But even if the small resolution one registers there, so even from the distance you can see your settlement. How good that would have been. It, it can't be that hard. There's so many structures there, so many buildings there. A few settlements, it, it can't be that hard, right? Like an awesome structure that you can see from the distance. So far, and I kind of like having just one machine per floor gives us room to grow up that is and with us having all of these materials here We're gonna need a lot more than two smelters good thing. I spent some time building more stuff Oh boy, and it looks like each one is a little less lined up than the last and now all we need to do is run these things All the way up there honestly shouldn't be too hard if I just click and then hold I can make these go a little bit higher and then thankfully from here We can just get it to connect all the way up here like this. Ah, that was easy. In fact, you know what? I think I think we have too much space up here. Let's go ahead and highlight these three things and trim this down to a perfect three by three grid. And there we go, nice and even. Now all we need to do is connect this thing right here, making sure to connect every machine to minerals with a whole beautiful system of dragging our stuff up as high as it'll go. And what an eyesore too. Hmm, who doesn't love their spaghetti airborne? I know I do. Okay, so now we've got a couple of things covered like copper ingots as well as iron ingots. And we've also got limestone turning into concrete. Oh, and you know, I gotta wonder something. Thing. If we go over here and use the hub and then launch another pod, is this thing going to be able to leave? Yep, doesn't look like anything's gonna stop this. Well, that's nice to know. Besides, I don't think it's going anywhere anyway. I think it's just gonna stay up there until it comes back down. And then when it makes its return trip, it does the same thing using the plat- What the fuck? That was the same thing in all the older videos, right? The beta version. You could have like removed its visual so it actually disappears when it goes to sky and then comes back. But making it hover there is just like fourth wall breaking, right? That's just insane. Like, well, you can literally see it's there. How hard is it to just make it disappear? Platforms for leverage before landing smoothly. The future's got cool technology. Now, the next thing we need to work on is building the space elevator, which if you look at it in our building stuff, shouldn't be that hard to build. In fact, I already have most of the things we need. This concrete in particular should be pretty easy. All I have to do is step off the edge, drop down a floor, and wouldn't you know this one's making concrete. Now, this wire, on the other hand, we don't have a machine for this, but we do now, and belt goes in there. To make wire, though, we need this belt to connect to copper, which is down here here somewhere. At least I think it's down here. Ow. Oh yeah, there it is. And we're gonna want to send it out of the other side of this container. Okay, so let's pull the copper out through here. Send the conveyor belt over yonder. And then just find a place where it'll work. Build that piece too. And then before you know it, copper has arrived at our constructor. And out comes the wire. Giant, beautiful spools of copper. In fact, while we're at it, since we're gonna need stuff that makes iron plates, iron rods, screws, and cables... Am I supposed to believe that there's a human inside those machines because why would copper come out perfectly rolled up in a thing like that, right? There has to be some kind of a middle process there that we're missing. You goes inside, machine literally wraps it around in perfect thing in that one and there you go. I went ahead and built constructors for those too. We got iron ingots going in to turn into iron plates, not to mention other iron ingots popping out to make iron rods, iron rods that are then getting transported all the way to the top conveyor belt and then shoved into another machine to make screws. And of course, we can't forget about the copper wire, which goes in looking like this and then comes out looking like cable. And now that we have all the supplies we need, let's build the space elevator. Oh God, you know, looking at it now, I don't think this is gonna fit. It seems a little too big for the space provided. Okay, just this once we're gonna make this platform bigger okay there we go the impossible is now possible and there it goes getting built and if i recall it does a little song and dance or whatever we want to call this and then i think something else is supposed to happen but i can't remember quite what it is Oh yeah. Oh, you know, never mind. I remember now. It's burned into my memory forever. And there you have it. Our very own space elevator. And what's that above this? Is that new? It looks like there's more stuff up there. I guess we'd have a better idea if it wasn't so cloudy. Well, either way, let's see what this has to offer to us. So basically, we need to get through phase one, also known as make smart plating. 50 to be exact. And you're probably like, what are smart plates? Well, I'm so glad you asked. We actually unlock it under tier two under part assembly, which also unlocks a bunch of other advanced stuff assemblers, rotors, modular frames, all of which I think we're gonna need to build that thing. Well, be careful there. You're gonna hit the space elevator on your way up to that thing. Oh, hey, we can see it now. Oh, and I guess that's where our little transport thing goes, up to the mothership. And now that this is unlocked, this is how it's gonna- This is, this is insane. Like, you made this mothership level a space elevator, literally, right? A concept of space elevator. You actually build that. The thing is still hovering there. This game is insane. Work. We need to shove components into here so that it can get sent up here 
to whoever lives up there. Although first I need to know if we can keep building up because I sure would like to know if we can keep building vertically since it's oh so fun. And the good news is it looks like we can indeed build right through it. I think it's highlighting yellow to let us know it's going to clip through things as if we care. In fact, I think it looks better this way. Anyway, this is how smart plating works. To make it, we need these two things. Reinforced iron plates and rotors. Once we have... This makes me think, right? Every time those give video games that tell video games and things that tells you, like even the movies, right? That tells you like alien structure looking some like awesome, like, uh, you know, a triangle, this and that, great shape, great metallic structure. <laughs> what if aliens don't care about being... Uh, you know, like properly aligned and shit like that. What if like aliens are like this, willingly just making shit, and when you actually look at alien structure, it looks like something like this, just haphazardly like put together, like morphing into other things. Hey, there you go. We don't care about all the like tidying up and shit, right? You check that room, and they're like basically hoarders. All the shit is just there, nothing cleaned up. It's just like yeah, it's just it's, it's stuff. What's what's wrong with that? <laughs> have both of those things, we can run a belt from each into this assembler, but to make reinforced iron plates, we'll have to combine plates and screws, and rotors are a combo of rods and screws. So basically we need three assemblers. Well, I guess it's a good thing I built those then. Now it's just a matter of configuring each one. You will make reinforced iron plates, which means hopping down here. This won't kill me, will it? Oh, nice somersault. And by that, I mean using the conveyor belts to climb all the way back up. Pull a conveyor belt out of here, which is where the iron plates are coming from, and then send them past the space elevator using this absolutely abysmal looking system to get the plates up there. But hey, it's hard to argue with success. All that matters is that they made it to the machine. And then we just head on over to the screws and do it again. And yes, by do it again, I of course mean to add on to this thing. Ah, uh, yes, what a visual splendor. And now we only need to do this four more times. Thankfully for when we're gonna make rotors. One of the things we're gonna need is screws, which thankfully we already have up here. So all we really need to do is run a splitter. And once we have that, we can just split them off and feed them into the next machine. And similarly with these rods, we're gonna use a splitter and use that to send rods up above. Yes, yes, come with me. Join this masterpiece. And now that we have the reinforced iron plates being made, as well as the rotors, we just have to wait for them to do their thing until we have enough of them. Then it's time to take them and feed them into the next machine where they will make the smart plate. And then that smart plating goes into the space elevator. Wow, just look at it go. And that means loading is done. And now seal it with a kiss and watch as it plunges. And now send. Uh oh, and it looks like it's getting ready to send. Or is it? Can't be too sure about that. Distribution platform completed. Yeah, it looks real complete to me. Oh, it's so peaceful all of a sudden. What about you up there? Oh, hey, that thing's still up there. Whoa. Uh -oh. oh, and it seems to be growing exponentially. Either I pissed it off or this is what happens when you feed the space elevator. I wonder if they're as confused as we are how it built off nothing. Oh, okay, bye. We'll just go ahead and put it back where it was now. As we watch it build up and through all of our stuff again. Ugh, it's so weird. I'm not gonna lie, even I didn't see that coming. His running joke of just removing it after doing all that, after like figuring all the switches and button, or space elevator, like saying, oh, by the way, I'm going to remove that. Weird every time. I couldn't help but notice this thing is still taking the smart plating. And the reason for that is phase two needs not only those, a whole thousand of them, but then also these two things. Well, let's get started. As you can see back down here at the hub, we now have tiers. Okay, you know what? I'm going to stop here. I know there's like eight minute video left, but I guess we already know what happens with the older video. This is like finished version of it. They added shit to it, but yeah. I mean, this is a great game. Someone, someone like, let's game it out. It's just, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I remember, like, at the early times when he put, like, made those tornado and shit and actually broke the engine where it was, like, two, three frames. Developers actually, like, you know, like, try to figure shit out, like, how to make this work and things like that. How many games and how many developers is he gonna panic, right? Every time you do something, like, ah, damn it, we didn't see that coming. But there you go. Right, well, if you like, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.